Welcome to our class, April 20, 2023. We had uh, technical difficulties getting on tonight, but we got it figured out, but it's uh, an hour past the time. So our poor people who get on to ask the questions aren't here anymore, which is super sad, but I wanted to get the recording done anyway, because I have some fun things to share with you. And since it's the time of year to be planting gardens, I wanted to share my pictures so that it can help you in your garden. So welcome to Gardening with William DeMille. This is the show where we do our Thursday Q&A and where I help you have the very best garden of your entire life. On this call, we discuss the gardening, the farming, the livestock, the Georgic tradition, the soil health, everything that we can think of to help you have the most awesome garden in the entire world. The purpose is your help from the ground up. So we are going to get into this tonight, and I wanted to talk a little bit about herbs. So there's three things that you can do to grow the very best herbs in the world. And number one is you keep the ground covered with two things. One is a mulch, and one is living plants. So those are your two things. The next thing is uh, you want to have a, a diversity of crops growing, so many crops growing at the same time. And the last major point is to pick herbs a lot in order to keep them growing fresh and strong. This picture here is an herb garden I had a few years ago, and it has a multiple species growing in it. We have uh, creeping thyme, oregano, uh, there's a sage plant in the back, and a garlic, or I mean onion chives right here. And then uh, there's a couple of other things in here. I think that's a tarragon plant. And anyway, it's, it's fun and it's beautiful and it's little. This is a 12 inch pot. So you can have very successful good herbs in a small space. And that works out really good. Uh, you want to keep the ground covered with a mulch. This is a picture of my compost. And compost is a wonderful way to uh, cover the ground. And when you cover the ground, anywhere from one inch to five inches of material is about right. So you want, uh, you know, wood chips, compost, grass clippings, leaves that you rake up at the end of the year, um, detritus from the barnyard that you um, gather up. So those are good things. Uh, here, this is a picture in my greenhouse showing where I have covered the ground with cardboard and I covered over a, a whole bunch of cover crop plants that I was growing. So this was cereal rye, which is a grass, it's a, the grain. And then there was uh, hairy vetch in here. We grew that as a cover crop to help the soil, to feed the microbes. And when we were ready to plant something else, we put the cardboard over it and then we covered it with the uh, the wood chip the compost mulch. So this uh, cardboard right here, I moved it back. I moved the corner back just so you could see what's happening underneath. Normally it would just look like this over here where my cursor is. So still uh, principle number one, you can see the... The greenhouse here and in front of this greenhouse we have this area covered with about four inches of wood chips and it's just wood chips these have not been composted they were just fresh wood chips we put them down here we covered it up to keep this uh beautiful uh, uh to keep the moisture in to keep the sun from making it too hot uh, to keep the uh, fungus fed because as these decompose it feeds the fungus and in this bed right here, we have tulips, raspberries, thyme, alfalfa, onion, chives, garlic, chives, kochia, uh, yarrow, mallow, clover. There's probably some other things in there. But this is, uh, this is one way that you can grow your crops by mixing them all together. But keeping the ground covered is the key here. And remember, cover it with a mulch and cover it with living plants. So the reason you don't see living plants here is it's the dormant, uh, towards the dormant season. And we took a crop of uh, things that were in here. We took them out and then we just got this covered up. And so we planted the perennials in there. Um, so here's a picture. This is fun because we have a whole bunch of things growing in these flower pots. I've got the cactus. I've got the pansies. And we have other kinds of crops growing in there. There's lamb's quarters in here, which are a weed when they get big. But young, like you can see here where I'm pointing with my cursor, this lamb's quarter plant, those are good to eat at that point. Of course, there's red clover, mallow, which are, uh, well, those are both medicinal herbs that are good. The peas are obviously just a food crop. Uh, here's a garden that I had a few years ago, and you can see that uh, the pots we chose kind of go with the aesthetics of what we were doing. 
And so that was a great thing. Um, I do like the aesthetics of this. I think it's important uh, to have an aesthetic that you like. So pick pots that you love. But you can see that some pots have several different things in them. And some pots are monocrops, like these four uh, uh, basil plants. These are the green globe basil. And the green globe basil is super fun because the leaves are so tiny. It's a fun variety of basil to grow. Here is, uh, we're still on principle number two right here. So mixing plants together, you want to have as many species growing together. You want that diversity in the soil. It's very important. So in this pot right here, this is the dormant season. This is winter time in the greenhouse. So there are some green living plants, but it's dormant because the, the fig tree knows that it's winter. But you can see right here, this is the fig tree right there coming up where my cursor is uh, pointing. And that's not what we wanted to do. And so, but inside here, we have all these other things. There are uh, lettuce mix, onion chives, uh, grape hyacinth, flowers, dandelions in the pot that are growing. So it's good to have all these different things because you get different plant families. And when you have different plant families, it helps with disease resistance, pest resistance, and problems like that. And here's this artichoke. And then over here, we have um, strawberries growing in there. Uh, principle number two still is the idea of lots of plants growing together. This shows the stone wall during construction of my wallapini. And when we uh, built this wallapini style greenhouse, we wanted this stone wall to be a thermal mass to hold the stones um, in here, holds the dirt back, and then the stones would hold the uh the herbs and, and so so that's what we did and we were excited about that to be able to get a great a great place for those herbs to be and i did construct this in the summer of 2020 during the covid shutdowns and this is what it looked like actually yesterday i took this picture so we're going on the third growing season in here the third year and this is what it looks like now so now we have there's, there's yarrow growing in here, which is really little right now. It's it's not spiking up. I think it's right there, the one you can actually see on the picture. And we have chamomile here. We have asparagus down here. There's rhubarb up here. And, uh, of course, there's dock all over the place, curly dock, which is a medicinal herb. Most people just figure it's a weed. It's kind of like this, uh, this mallow over here. It's considered a weed, too. But... Uh, they're good medicinal herbs. If you have a medicinal person in your world, they will know how to use this stuff. And in the pots right here, we have the citrus trees. This is uh, a picture that we took. Uh, when did we take this? This would have been the first growing season in here. I have to look at other things, but yeah, I don't have the table up there. So the table's not there. So this is my very first growing season, first summer growing in here but see how it's it's starting to resemble a jungle and that's what you want you want a jungle think jungle 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 lots and lots of diversity so mix up your uh, herbs and your vegetables together mix them together it's very important to mix them together because it helps you to get your four plant minimum families together that we keep harping about on these classes because uh when you have a minimum of four plant families then you have a maximum of plant excuse me you have a maximum of insect uh like resistance and disease resistance and that's one of the biggest problems that we have is insect and disease problems in the world where we live okay mixing pleasant different plants together we're still on principle number two so you can see that we have beets which is a vegetable crop we have the garlic which is a food crop uh, or if you can consider both of those medicinal herbs, actually. And then we've got the romaine in here. We have mixed lettuce. And there's a, there's a, a parsley plant growing um, back in here. Now, if we make that bigger, that might not actually be a parsley plant. But there was parsley in here at one point. So I kind of thought that was. But now that I'm looking at it, it looks like maybe it's alfalfa. We need to remember as we're mixing the species together to let nature do its thing. So all of this Claytonia right here seeded itself. I did not plant this, but it's a beautiful gift that just came because I don't kill up, uh, take away and kill every weed that I see. And so we get a lot of gifts in here without having to do any work. But there's basil here by my left knee. We have uh, the 
mature claytonia here over here we've got the uh a celery that's growing so that's pretty awesome a lot of people think that uh the strawberries and garlic don't do well together because there's been some gardening books published in the past that say not to plant strawberries with garlic which i think is um not really very accurate because garlic and strawberries do very well together and there are some companion planting books that say they do good together so there's a lot of misinformation out there in the world of, of gardening here's the picture of, of two days ago of just taking of the greenhouse i wanted to focus this one this picture on the stone wall this herb wall because it's finally in the third growing season now it's becoming what i had envisioned in the first place so uh you know the first year it was pretty sparse it was hard to get plants to grow last year we got quite a few plants established and this year this spring uh because this is you know we took this picture you know towards the end of april 2023 and so this is starting to fill out really well so i have high hopes throughout the growing season of this summer that it's going to be doing uh doing really good so here's a close up and we have the big pots down here underneath. We've got the burdock here, good medicinal herb. We have the uh, pot clear full of claytonia. Fig trees over here just outside the picture. Although this is a branch right there and right here. We see the plastic thing on here. That's uh, where we've been uh, root layering this one. And the branch is still alive. So I think it's gonna take root. That'll be awesome. Uh, and then there's lots of strawberries. Strawberry, 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 strawberry strawberry this one up here you can see the white flower is really easy on that one and so that's good and then of course more dock more uh more mallow no a lot of these mallows and docks will just take over the whole thing so we've got to be careful not to let them go to seed but it's good to have some of those plants around once in a while and this uh, is a fun picture there's this beautiful gray one in the center here and that's the main reason that i took this picture is so you can see this gray plant. I don't know what it is. It's a native plant to uh, here. I see it growing here in northern Nevada, and but it's fun and it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. If it's noxious, I'll get rid of it and eradicate it because that's not that hard to do. And if it's good, if it's valuable, then we will let it grow and thrive. And we'll just let it live here. But you can see the asparagus growing right here, coming out of the pot. Uh, the garlic, I mean, the onion chives right here, and then garlic chives right behind it. The artichoke, and what is next? Uh, French, I mean, Welch perennial onions right here. That's the main thing in this picture, but there's quite a few other things that you can actually see in there. There's peas growing here. I put a bunch of pea seed in here in uh, early March, and they've started growing, and we do have some peas on the vines already. Uh, the the main purpose of this picture was to show you the comfrey plant that's beginning to bloom. The little flowers are right here starting to grow. And it's in a, one of these large pots. This is a 30-inch pot across here, so a gigantic pot. And the, this uh, comfrey plant's growing so large that it's totally uh, covered the whole, the whole thing. So that's pretty awesome. So kind of the whole point of showing you this, uh, all these pictures today, is to show you that there's a lot of ideas and different ways of doing an herb garden. You can do it in pots. You can do it in containers. You can do it on a vertical wall. Um, you can just mix it up in your garden bed. So however you want to do. But uh, rule number three is picking it a lot to keep things growing fresh. And you can see that this parsley right here is not growing as good as it could be. This parsley could be growing a lot better. It could be a lot more beautiful than it is. But uh, it's you know it's still good to eat like this but you can see that some of the leaves are getting old and big so you would want to keep your plants picked more often than this uh, this is one of my graduates from last season in 2022 and her project because each student uh, student chooses a project but her project was a medicinal herb project and that was her personal project but she has a bouquet here of all kinds of medicinal herbs which is pretty awesome and so I threw that picture in because I thought it was um, fun just to show what can, you know, what can be done. And then cilantro on, in both of these pictures, it's going to seed. And you can see. Okay, so you can see the 
uh, the stem of the cilantro coming up here. So we're, I think I'm going to let some of these grow because cilantro and coriander are the same species, they're the same plant. The cilantro is when it's very low growing and you pick the leaves. Coriander is when you let it come up and it makes seed and then you pick the seeds off and you eat the seed. So cilantro is the leaf when the plant is young. Coriander is the seed when the plant dies. Uh, and a lot of people worry about... Uh, uh, seeds, uh, not seeds, but herbs going to seed and they are bolting and they're, they're not good anymore. What do we do to stop it? And the biggest complaint I get is cilantro. Cilantro is a cool weather crop. So growing it in the winter in a greenhouse is much better, but people love to have it while they have tomatoes to eat. So they want to grow it uh, for a salsa garden. Um, it's just harder to grow in the summer. In fact, I have struggled the last uh, three years or two years growing seasons here to have it ready in the summer at the same time we're making salsa to the chagrin of those who love salsa, which is too bad uh, because there are certain recipes of salsa where cilantro is uh, a key ingredient and I have not been able to have that be successful. So I'm going to try harder this summer to make it happen, but it's a struggle because cilantro is a cool weather crop and it doesn't like the heat of summer where your peppers and tomatoes, which are the other major part of salsa, is a hot weather crop. So it's hard to grow them together. Um, but if you are going to try to grow it through the hot season, you would want to start your seeds about twice a month or once a month, you know, every two weeks, every four weeks, whatever, so that you have fresh new plants coming up all the time. And then you're just picking um, that new growth that comes up. Instead of trying to prune this back once it's bolted, to keep it fresh, you just need to plant new seed with when it comes to cilantro. Here's the main nine ways that I help people grow food. Newsletter, my book is ready to order from Amazon, which is awesome. Go ahead and order my book. Um, I'm a soil laboratory. I can do your tests. I have a three-day boot camp. It's coming up next week. And then we'll have another one in the middle of the summer. And I do consulting. I have a Patreon uh, video uh, subscription that you can get. I do a 17 week boot camp, and my wife said, You got to lose that name. Nobody knows what that means. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of a good name for what that is. What it is, it's an ecological agricultural training program to train a new generation of farmers, but that's a mouthful. So, yeah. And of course, there's the weekly QA, and there's the YouTube channel. So, what we have coming up right now is the spring boot camp, April 27, 28, 29. That is next week. So, this uh, recording of uh, next week, we won't have the Thursday Q&A because I will be busy with my boot camp clients that will be here. Uh, if <laughs> if you want to come to boot camp, you need to go to www.georgicrevolution.com and all the information is there for you to come to one of my boot camps. And I try to hold four of those every year. One in the for the summer, the spring, the winter, and the fall. So the next one coming up in the in the summer will be getting your fall gardens ready to plant for the winter time. And our 17-week online course starts May 27th. And if you want to come to that, there are options for online. And so you need to go to the website, contact me through my website. The information is there and we can help you to have the very best garden of your entire life. So hopefully this has helped you to have a fantastic garden. And I am sorry that we didn't get this uh, going while people are trying to get into the meeting. That is the glory of living in rural America where technology isn't as good as it is when you live in a city. So we will close this out and I will get this uploaded to YouTube. Have a fantastic week and we will see you in two weeks time because next week on Thursday will be boot camp.